Welcome to our video devotional for today, Tuesday, January the 5th, 2021. And I'm talking this week about these, these things that Jesus did after he resurrected. First he resurrected, then these things he did before uh, he went to the Father. And today I want to talk about Christ fellowshiped. I want you to hear this because it's, I believe it's so important in, in the midst of what has been called a pandemic and, and, and the fact that so many things have, have changed for a lot of people. And that really hasn't changed much for me personally, but sure has for a lot of other people. See, God has always desired fellowship with the highest of his creation, mankind. He designed us with a heart for him and a heart for eternity. It's no wonder that when Jesus arose from the grave, he sought fellowship with those he had trained and spent three years plus in ministry. Some might argue that he did this solely to prove of his res to give proof of his resurrection, but I think not. He wanted his disciples to know that his promise of his presence was real. So I'm going to give you 13 appearances of Christ after his resurrection. First, he appeared to Mary Magdalene as a gardener. Mark 16 and John 20. He appeared to the other two women who were with Mary Magdalene, Salome and Mary, the mother of James, in Matthew 28. He appeared to Peter, Luke 24. He appeared to two men on the road to Emmaus in Luke 24. He appeared to the apostles except for Thomas in Luke 24 and John chapter 20. He appeared to the apostles with Thomas in John 20. He appeared to seven of his disciples on the shores of the Sea of Galilee in John 21. He appeared to the apostles on a mountain in Galilee in Mark 28 or Mark 16, excuse me, in Matthew 28. He appeared to over 500 brethren, according to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 6. He appeared to his brother James, according to 1 Corinthians 15, 7. He appeared to the apostles and ate a meal with them in Acts 1, 3 through 8 in Luke 24. He appeared at his ascension. He was there in Acts 1 and Mark 16 and Luke 24. And he appeared to Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 and Acts 9 and Acts 18 and Acts 23, recording all of those occasions of his appearance to, to Paul. My point is extremely clear. After his resurrection, Jesus sought fellowship. The proof is in the text. He was alive, but more importantly, he desired fellowship with those connected to him. After his resurrection, Jesus significantly took time to fellowship. Is it any wonder that the same desire is in us? I, I believe that uh, one of the tools of the enemy, the devil, is to isolate us from other believers. There are many, many reasons for this, but one major reason is to get us to be independent. See, independence generally means lack of accountability. It's more difficult to yield to our flesh when in the presence of those who have a strong desire to love and obey Christ. It's easier to follow Christ when we keep in fellowship. I'm not stating that we don't need time alone. And we need solitude. I think Jesus practiced that as well. But too much time to ourselves often leads to a spirit that is not only not submitted to man who we can see, but not submitted to the God whom we cannot see. Something crazy has happened this past year and is continuing into the year 2021 concerning COVID-19. It is this cry that's being preached even louder right now to stay at home and not connect, not get it together in groups. And then they've added this obscene catchphrase. Obscene because it's juxtaposed against uh, 
staying connected by saying, we can do this together. In other words, stay home by yourself, but we can do this together. I mean, come on. What a pretense that is. We could never operate alone. We as believers must stay connected. The body of Christ was meant to meet together, not over Zoom or Facebook or any other technological means. Now, if technology is the only way we can connect and find, but folks, listen, we were meant for fellowship and that means personal contact. It's been proven over and over again by psychiatrists and psychologists, the, the power of a personal connection, a personal touch, just to even put your hand on someone's arm. And we've been told to stay away from this, that we're going to pass some, this uh, disease on and somebody's going to die because you didn't do this right. But mostly God himself, who created us in his own image, invited us to stay connected and fellowship with one another. And then he told us all these one another's in the New Testament. <laughs> what did Jesus do after he resurrected and before he ascended? He fellowshiped. He got together with his disciples. I want to challenge you to practice the same. I know there's some rules out there, but those rules are in violation of our very firm belief that we are to be in physical contact with one another. If Jesus practiced it, so ought we. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, give us courage to be the people that we need to be. To love one another. To as much as possible obey the laws of the land, but not to avoid contact with one another, since we desperately need this in the body of Christ. Thank you for giving us the courage to obey what you've told us to do and what you practiced as an example for us. And Lord, whether that's just in smaller groups than going to big church services, so be it. But Lord, help us to stay in contact with one another and not neglect it. I pray for that to happen in the name of Jesus. Amen. Grace and peace today. Have a blessed day.